greeting students we welcome you to this new semester and i would like to start the session with a short story by anton chekhov the name of the story is the bet this short story has come in the year 1889 and the story starts in 1870s so it uh, there was a multi millionaire in russia and he has given a party to his friends the party was going on and there started a conversation between the multi millionaire and a young lawyer the conversation was like this they were they were debating about whether which punishment is worse is worst whether the capital punishment or a life imprisonment multi millionaire was saying that capital punishment is the worst punishment in the world but that lawyer young lawyer denied and he said that life imprisonment imprisonment is the worst punishment in the world so the conversation was going on and uh, finally there they settled in a bed multi millionaire told that he will give 2 million 2 million rupees if the young lawyer is confined to a small room for 5 years instead the young lawyer agreed for this but he told that he will be there in the loan room for 15 years so that started the bet and the young lawyer was confined to a small room from 1870 onwards and that has to end on 1885 and slowly that was going on that uh, confinement in a small room the first year the young lo lawyer was singing was dancing was hearing many songs so it was going like that from the second year onwards there was a little change instead of singing and dancing he asked the multi millionaire to buy some books slowly he started reading 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 books it goes to third year fourth year fifth year therefore he started reading many books and also he started reading the books in different different languages he started producing things in different languages and asked the multi millionaire to give to the particular language expert and ask them to check whether it was done in a good manner and also requested him if it is good to give to to give gun fires gun shots in the garden so that if that young lawyer if he heard the gun shot he will feel happy therefore that also happened multi millionaire gave to some language experts and they said that it was good and he fired gun gun shots this was heard by the young lawyer in the confinement room and he was very happy slowly sixth year seventh year eighth year so every year exception of the first year he started learning new new books so across many things may be religion or spirituality or literature sciences history many things he learned and about many scholars across across the globe he started learning so there came came the last day of his confinement that is in 1885 but this time the multi millionaire is in debt he lost his money through gambling and all other things stock exchanges etc now he does not possess any money at all since he does not possess any money how can he give 2 million rupees to that young lawyer now now he has become 15 years old so he was thinking thinking and walking around how to give this fellow this much big amount but i didn't possess any and at one time 
he thought that since that fellow in that room he will be very thin he will not possess that much energy why can't i enter into that room and why can't i simply kill him so that i won't give money tomorrow when this bed comes to an end he thought like that and he slowly entered into that room and he saw that yes a thin man is uh, lying down he saw he saw him but he slow without disturbing him he slowly went to take a pillow and keep it on his face so that to kill him he slowly he was moving by that time he saw a paper on the table and he thought that what is on that paper he slowly went to the paper and took the paper and he he read it said that sir these 15 years you have provided me an opportunity to learn many 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 new things so i learned history i learned literature i learned things done by many scholars across the world i have to thank you to provide this opportunity so after seeing this after learning this that 2 million rupees which i would get after coming out of this room is nothing so i don't want that money sir just i want to go away i thank you again for providing this good opportunity after reading this that multimillionaire he started crying like anything just he went but he ha- ha- he thought that he should kill him but now he changed his mind and slowly he went to that young lawyer and slowly kissed his on his forehead and he came he came out this story tells us how that lawyer used his time in his loneliness so that is the situation now that that is the situation we face now in this covid pandemic situation all of us confined in our home where we have much time so that we can spend in our academics therefore we enter into this new semester and the course for us is this learning to function as a teacher and th- this course is a practical one where we would be learning about micro teaching and it is the core skill which we are going to learn in this semester but though online still we come to the university <coughs> let us get to it yes you can see this in 1930 the republican controlled house of representatives in an effort to alleviate the effects of the anyone anyone the great depression passed the anyone anyone the tariff bill the holly smoot tariff act which anyone raised or lowered raised tariffs in an effort to collect more revenue for the federal government did it work anyone anyone know the effects it did not work and the united states sank deeper into the great depression Today we have a similar debate over this. Anyone know what this is, class? Anyone? Anyone? Anyone seen this before? The Laffer curve. Anyone know what this says? It says that at this point on the revenue curve, you will get exactly the same amount of revenue as at this point. This is very controversial. Does anyone know what Vice President Bush called this in 1980? Anyone? something doo economics voodoo economics have you seen this small video how he is ta- he has taken the class of course this is from his movie but i i am using it for our classroom purposes just so if you consider this as a real situation this teacher he does not know how to teach therefore we are in the process of making a teacher therefore we have to be trained and that training we provide here 
before becoming a full fledged teacher we have to go for a training and that we call it as micro teaching so to tell about teaching process it is a very complex phenomenon so whether we daily go to the class by preparing but things may not be going as we expected sometimes the class may go well sometimes it more it more be dull also it is not as like an industrial process sometimes we keep when we keep on teaching many of them will be understanding some of them may not be understanding some may be talking to others some may be gossiping to others some may be understanding few may pretend to understand when a teacher turns to the board students will turn to the electronic gadgets many things many many things may happen in classes because it is which it's we are uh, training a human mind we are teaching to a human it's a, so, so in all this process even though we prepare many things things may not be going as expected so all these things teacher has to negotiate and he or she has to tell what communicate what he had in mind at the end of the class as some achievement has to come in the minds and behavior and action of the students so in this complex phenomenon a teacher has to come well so to get trained in this complex phenomenon a teacher need what we call it as micro teaching see it does exist in all professions suppose if you consider an mbbs course a doctor making course at the end of the fifth year every mbbs student will will become what we call it as house surgeon we also call it as housey you know that also in engineering after finishing the course they will put in apprentice that they will be learning before they enter into their profession so in all the profession they are like this so in our teaching profession micro teaching will give, will try new to become a full fledged teacher okay that's what what we are going to see in our course the first micro teaching is started in stanford university by dwight allen in 1963 and they have identified 14 skills in teaching the education research and development committee of australia they have listed 140 skills in teaching and farsi avron man in 1976 he has listed 30 skills so different people they have listed different different skills in teaching but we have also less we have we have selected core teaching fields numbering 8 for our course that i will be telling little little later but let us now dwell upon what we call it as micro teaching teaching you know all along this year all along from lkg or if you take first standard to this you know what what is a teaching is a teacher teaches a lesson have, having an objective in his or her mind but at the end of the class as the student has to achieve that objective what teacher had in his or her mind so there is a process and now let us see what a micro teaching is let's slowly we will tell so micro teaching is a scaled down teaching technique so the time for micro teaching is less it is 5 minutes it's around 5 minutes maybe 5 to 6 minutes the micro teaching is taught to only a small number of people like 5 not having more people like 40 or 50 because if you take more number of people sometime a person may get afraid or he even he may not talk or talk sometimes the words may not come from his mouth he will get stuck without telling any words therefore we re we reduce the number we reduce the time also 
the skills which i said previously we are we also going to list list little later only one skill at a time is taken and content which is suitable for that 5 minutes so this is what we call a micro teaching so micro teaching is simple to understand it is a scale down teaching in terms of four thing so number one is time two is number of peers means of same group so number of peers is five only one teaching skill at a time and the content suitable for five minutes i think now you people can define what a micro teaching is just if you make this in a form of sentence then that is called as micro teaching so micro teaching is a scaled down teaching technique of duration 5 minutes before 5 five peers by taking only one skill and that of contents which is suitable for 5 minutes so this is what we call as micro teaching let us build further and this is a definition where we have generated by our own understanding and let me show you before a definition by education educationist the first one is micro teaching is a scaled down teaching encounter in class size and class time by allen in 1966 the second definition is by allen and eve in 1968 micro teaching is defined as a system of control practice that makes it possible to concentrate on specific teaching behavior and to practices under controlled condition so these micro teaching we will be doing under a controlled condition so one supervisor will be there some four or four or five of your classmates will be there before them you will be practicing this skill so that we call it as micro teaching so for our course we have selected some eight teaching skills which i will be presenting before you so skill of initiation which means that beginning of the class introductory part of the class skill of explanation skill of demonstration where teacher demonstrate an experiment before the students skill of questioning which is also very important to test the understanding level of the students skill of using blackboard so it's a very important skill after finishing the class the blackboard should say something the summary of the class what we have taught even though if sometime students miss little bit they can understand from from the board what we have taught what you have written the skill of reinforcement so learning will be enhanced by means of reinforcement so that is what will be dealt by this skill reinforcement skill of stimulus variation so a teacher has to vary the stimulus different different stimulus during the class time skill of closer so this is the skill which will deal how we have to end the class see have you seen see the all the skills this is the first to four so we have to initiate a class this is for explanation the third one is for how to demonstrate the fourth one is for questioning fifth one is for writing in a blackboard then reinforcement stimulus variation and then closer so these are the eight skill which we have taken for this semester and i'll be telling about this one by one and also i'll be giving some demonstration for you so after that we have to practice each skill each skill you have to practice one for physical science pedagogy and one for max pedagogy so all this eight each skill you have to practice for two pedagogies max and physical science so that will be supervised by by our faculty okay. let us build further let us move further so this is for skill of initiation this skill deals about how we have to start a class because starting a class is very important so this possess four components starting a class possess four components before starting a class we have to create the interest in the student and that we call it as motivation so every class 
we have to little bit we have to motivate. We, we can start a science class by asking who has discovered what or what who has awarded with the Nobel Prize and what was the last Nobel Prize given in chemistry and so on. So like this, how this iron is getting rusted. So many small, small things you can put towards the students so that you can create the interest in them. Then you can go to today's class. So creating interest. The second one is apperception. Means you have to connect the thing towards the previous. Suppose you are teaching today's class. The today's concept which you are going to teach today how would have had a connection in previous classes. Those connections you have to link. So yesterday we have seen this. And now we'll be seeing the advanced level of yesterday's. Like that, you have to make a connection between the new thing which you are we are going to teach and the, the things which was taught earlier. So the connection you have to make, this connection we call it as a perception. A perception. For this, you can use a technique. The technique can be a story, can be a dialogue, can be a small experiment, can be a riddle. Can be a joke also, we can tell, but it need not be joke for 20 minutes. It can be a joke for two minutes. So anything we can use. A small proverb we can tell. So these things we call it as technique. So a story, a riddle, a proverb, a joke, a small video presentation, whatever it is. A small, a small technique, maybe of three to four minutes. Within that, we have to finish. So after this, then we have to continue to the today's plan. So this consists of four things, which we call it as our interest creation, a perception, using a technique, and further continuation. So we move to the second technique, skill of explanation. So the skill of explanation, it possesses seven components. So whatever the teacher have in mind, that concept, they have, we have to put it clearly to the students. So we may explain how Vibjar is being formed. We may explain why the sky is blue. We may explain why the sea is blue. We may explain how the things fall if you put the theory of gravity or further things, whatever it is. So we keep explaining by giving the cause and reasons. So we will be explaining by telling about it. because of this, this is happening. Okay. So to do that, these are the components which we have to concentrate. So if you want to say why the sea is blue, then we have to begin a beginning statement why the sea is blue or how the VGR is being formed. Then as you keep on building, there are some words because of this, therefore. So all these words we call it as cognitive link. So we'll start with a statement. We keep on building the statement. And because of this reason, and something will be happening, and those things will be connecting. That we call it as a cognitive link. And fluently, we will be telling what we are explaining our how the C is blue or why the WebGR is being formed. We'll be telling. And then we will be converging on our essential points. And we may compare our thing to to the similar things and to the different things which are very opposite to that. And at last, we will, because of this one, Vibjar has been formed. So like that, we will be con concluding. And it is not essential by telling only the concluding statement. Also, we have to test whether the student, whether they have understood our explanation or not. That is the last one, which we call it as testing the achievement. So this is what the skill of explanation, which, has, which consists of seven components. So beginning statement, cognitive link, fluency, converging on essential points, compare and constant, concluding statement, testing the achievement. We'll move to the third one, which is very important for a science teacher. 
demonstration. So we will be demonstrating an experiment before the class. So the demonstration process eight components. So whenever we start a demonstration, it will be processing a clear object in clear objective, which will be reached by the students after the conclusion of the experiments. So for the demonstration, we have to take the appropriate instrument, which is required only, which is necessary only. We should not take the instruments or apparatus, which is not at all needed. That should not be entered into the club. So previously, we have to select the appropriate instrument. And the way we keep the instrument on the table, it's very much matter. So the suppose if there are some five or 10 instruments, sometimes one by one, if you want to show that before showing that has to be one end of the table as you keep on showing and if you are finishing then you have to keep on the other end of the table like that keeping the instrument is very much important it has to be ordered and you people would have seen many demonstration are simply easily we can say an example in our tv serials where they will used to go for cooking so the they will take one and show the recipes. A simple example for that is in our TV cell, which we show uh, something they are cooking. So that is a simple demonstration. OK. And then handling the instrument. Suppose in, if it's a chemistry, how to handle pipette, how to handle burette. In front of the students, we have to handle it as like and professional a profession handling the instrument like that we have to handle so that by seeing that the student may handle it in a better way so taking liquid through the pipette without getting into our mouth it's very important so how we are taking it's very 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 important therefore the students also learn in that way and they will take in the laboratory and also visibility of the instrument suppose if you put if there are 40 or 45 students in the class, the last row students, they have to see the instrument. Therefore, in that way, in that much height, we have to keep the instrument over the table. Or otherwise, we have to lift the instrument to such a height so that every student will see that. And this is an explanation. Also, we have dealt with the previous skill, how we have to do the explanation, the blackboard work. So simultaneously, if you keep explaining, you have to write in the blackboard, even in the TV serials where they are showing the recipes being cooked, they will also put the ingredients one by one, how they are taking. I'll also be before finishing, also they will tell some, they will summarize these are the things needed for this. Okay, at last also, we have to check how this has been achieved by the student. So overall, we have eight components for this skill of demonstration, objective, appropriate instrument, keeping the instrument, handling the instrument, visibility, explanation, blackboard work, BBW is blackboard work, and then student participation. We move to the fourth one, the skill of questioning. See, the questioning is a very important skill in teaching where the teacher uses this to know how far the student have understood what we have taught, what he or she has taught. See, it is primarily we have to have this in mind. We are not using the questioning technique to threaten the students or by asking this, we are putting the student in front of others in a manner to show their ignorance. So we never use for these purposes. We should not use to threaten them or we should not use to show their ignor ignorance in front of others. We should use only this questioning technique to know how far the students have understood the concept which we are teaching in the class. That's all. So with this in mind, let us go for the components in of questioning so they tell about six components in skill of questioning 
So it is what prompting means giving some clues. Our question should be precise. We should not ask ask a lengthy question, which see may, I think many things we have understood in assessment of learning, how to take a question. So our question should be precise. It should not be worded heavily and it should be relevant, relevant to our topic. We should not ask a question which is not irrelevant to our topic and it may seek further information. Our question may seek further information, which may be of application level question and the speed and pass. So in question, we should uh, use the optimum speed. Also, our question should be across, across our units. It should touch all parts of the units. So we should not give choices to students for a for a particular unit. Otherwise, the students may not read all the units. Okay. Therefore, in that way, we have to keep the choices within the units. Okay. So these are the components in the skill of questioning. So I'll I repeat again: prompting, precise, relevant, seeking further information, speed and pass, distribution of question. Okay. Then let us move to the fifth one using blackboard so we also said blackboard work in a demonstration bbw so using a blackboard is an art suppose even if a student if one or two minutes or three or four minutes, if, you, if he has not under, followed the teacher but little later if he sees the board he could get something about what the teacher has taught in the class in that way it has to be used we should not use here, there, bottom, wherever we are getting, we should not write. At last, it, will, it is look, a, a baby has crippled over a blackboard, like that it should not be. So a blackboard has to be systematically used from left to right. And also you can, you can do a partition in the blackboard. You have to write one by one. You have to write the keywords. So all this, you, you have to use the blackboard at, before ending the class. You can, by seeing the blackboard, we can summarize what we have taught in class. You have to put a neat diagram. So all those things, the process and all, we can use blackboard to explain. Of course, nowadays we may use LCD projection or many things other, but as a basic as a teacher, we should know the simple, the, the foremost teaching aid, which the, uh, the first and the foremost teaching aid in the class is the blackboard. Therefore, this is a, this comes under the essential skill. Even though we, we we move nowadays, we may use LCD also. Okay. So what we see before you five components of blackboard using which just I have a little little bit I told. So I, our handwriting may not be good. But what we are saying is we have to use a legible handwriting. So every person, even I may not be possessing a good handwriting like many of our students possess, but our handwriting should be legible so that others could read that stuff. Even if our handwriting is not good, it does not worry whether we are not possessing a good or bad handwriting, but we should write in the blackboard where others should, should read it. So legible handwriting and systematic, like that's what I told. So we can divide the blackboard into two parts and then we can write. I have to move from left to right. We should not use wherever we want systematic usage and synthesis of important compounds on the board. So suppose if we teach this micro teaching, the definition of the micro teaching should be the board. The place of the teacher is very important. So after writing in the board, we should not stand before it so the student will not be seeing what we have written in the board. So we should give the place for our writing. We should write it and we have to move so the students will be seeing the board clearly what we have written. So the place of the teacher without hiding what we have written. That's what in this mean place of the teacher and the illustration and diagram, so which means that whether we have to draw where, where and whenever necessary, and also we have to illustrate whether a flow is needed in the class. 
So these are the five components for using Blackboard. So legible handwriting, systematic usage, synthesis of important components, place of the teacher, illustration and diagrams. So we move to the next skill of reinforcement. So reinforcement is one where it makes a bond between stimulus and responses. Suppose if I ask a question that is stimulus for which you are answering that we call it as a response. Suppose if I ask a question and if you respond, I have to greet you. Good, beautiful, wonderful. So these words will, will be reinforcement for you. If I say, if I acknowledge your answer by saying that it's very good, it is wonderful, good man, so clever, if I, if I use all these words, so which means that these words make, make you to move towards my question for if I am asking another question, you will be keep on answering. So these, these provides reinforcement motivates you. So that to keep, to keep answering again and again, if a stimulus is provided. So reinforcement is one which makes the bond between the stimulus and the response very much intact. So that if many stimulus are provided, response will be coming and then again and again. Therefore, this, this reinforcement technique, a student teacher should know. That's why it has been kept under our course scheme. So these possess four components. And the four components, it is divided like this into two categories like verbal and nonverbal reinforcements. So verbal reinforcement, non-verbal reinforcement. In each category, we have positive and negative. Positive verbal reinforcement, negative verbal reinforcement. Positive non-verbal reinforcement, negative non-verbal reinforcement. So it's very simple to. So two category, in each category, we have two subdivisions. Okay, let us go by verbal positive verbal reinforcement just what i have said little bit before i said whenever a student answers a teacher's question the teacher has to say wonderful good sometimes a, a teacher of lower standard like ukg lkg they may also give chocolates if the student answer so that is also a reinforcement but psychology says that we should not give many prizes like that that should not be prolonged for 10th 11th or college college like like us if you keep on giving that at some point of time they may expect some price otherwise they may not give the answer that's why it has to be cut in. that is why we are also not giving any chocolate something in the class to you we will be saying easily beautiful clever wonderful answer so like that so positive verbal which we use verbal reinforcement i think you may also say what is positive non-verbal reinforcement. Okay, without using our words, using our gestures positively, that will that we will call a non-verbal read. So smiling, so just gesturing and clapping. So all these things it will be positive verbal reinforcement. Without using words. But it is a non-verbal manner, we encourage the students. Now we'll go for negative verbal reinforcement. So whenever a student say wrong answer, we tell them idiot, what, whether you are learning or not. So we will keep on scolding them. So this we call it as negative verbal reinforcement, which teachers should not use in the class. So the two negatives we should not use in the class, but we we are telling this for not using positive we are telling for using in the class okay negative we should not be so negative verbal reinforcement reinforcement okay so the words which are, which which makes move away those words which we should not use in the class negative non verbal means uh, just having angry faces so those negative stimulus, non-verbal stimulus, like angry face, 
like uh, threatening behavior, all those things. These are negative non-verbal reinforcement, which we should not use in our class. Okay. So these are the uh, skills of reinforcement. Positive means uh, uh, they will be taking and there will be a connection between the stimulus and the response. Negative means they should not take. Uh, I'll put an example like this. Uh, we, we are giving an assignment to the students and we will be asking to submit by tomorrow. Everybody has brought the assignment the next day, following assignment. By thinking the teacher will scold us if we are not bringing. They are, that's why they are completing, which means that they, they want to avoid the negative verbal reinforcement and therefore they are giving their good behavior. So negative verbal or non-verbal that has to be awarded by the students. There is positive verbal and non-verbal, they will be taken by the students. So positive verbal and non-verbal by taking, it will be strengthened. The stimulus and response, response will be strengthened by taking in the positive. The negative verbal or non-verbal, the students, they will not take, but even then they will be showing the good behavior because they are afraid of that and they will show the good behavior. If I am not bringing this, teacher will scold me, therefore I am bringing it. So you, uh, I, I think you may be understanding the meaning. Both reinforcement means they will be giving the responses. Positive means they will take the response, they will take it from the teacher and they will give the good response. Negative means th they will be avoiding it. In order to avoid the negative verbal reinforcement, they will show the positive behavior. So in all the ways, it is in reinforcement. Reinforcement means that it strengthens the behavior of the students. Okay, I think you will be understand whether it is a positive or negative. The behavior will be behavior of the student will be good. One difference is in positive, they will be taking in the positive. For negative, they will be avoiding it by in order to avoid the negative, they will be showing the good behavior. As I have told a little example of an assignment, submission of an assignment. This is the other important thing which we have to use in class, which we call it as a stimulus variation. The stimulus which we have to provide in the class has to be varied little by little. See, suppose if I keep teaching in the class at the same place, in, in a place I am standing, in that place itself I am standing from the beginning of the class to the end of the class. If that is so, the students who are seeing the teacher, their eyeballs, it will not be moving. It will be on that teacher or teacher for all the one hour. And easily they will get boredom because they are not moving their heads. They are not moving their eyes. So easily they will get boredom. Therefore, a teacher have to move a little bit physically in the class in order that they can at least they can turn the heads they can move their eyes sometimes we have to go and write in the board sometimes you have to ask some fellow to tell something this is called stimulus variation sometimes you have to use our hands to so some suppose if say so there is a, some very tall building i have to say like this i have to use my and show the tall building like that. Okay. Therefore, if I move like this, then also the boredom will be a little bit reduced. If I teach in a class like statue, student will get boredom easily. So we have to give variety, variety of stimulus to the student. So by physically moving, by writing in the board, by asking some questioning, by using different gestures. So all these things will provide uh, stimulus variations so that there will be uh, in interaction between the student and the teacher. And we may create an instruction among the students so that the interest is sustained in the class. Okay, we'll be seeing its components and it possesses seven components. One is modulation noise, 
I think for me, it may not be that much modulation. No? There may be some good teacher or for this, you can take actors in movies. So if you take an actor, how they modulate their voices. So as far as the Tamil film is concerned, we can tell about Sivaji's voice. The hero of Esther, yes. His voice is that much good uh, for a king. Uh, and where you know, well known uh, between the Katabaman and the British rulers. So that voice is that much for every actor to act, they will practice this one only. The dialogue between the King Katabaman and the British ruler. Okay, so the modulation is wise. It is an action. It it may give, it may give uh, a different different stimulus. Therefore, the students' interest is sustained in the class. The second is sometimes we have to pass. You have to wait. We should not flow as like river flows from the top. If we keep on flowing. Sometimes students may also miss. Therefore, sometimes you pass a little. Pass means not for 20 minutes. Just pass for seconds. Three seconds. Four seconds. You pass. You ask a question, then pass for a little time. Then ask another question. Likewise, other then go for further explanation, whatever. So change of senses. So suppose if I am talking, you will be listening. Suppose if I writing, you will be seeing. So listening and seeing different, different senses, change of senses, change of interaction. I'll be talking for some time. I'll ask some student to talk with me. I'll ask some two students to start an interaction. So these are change of interaction between teacher and student, between among between or among the students, and also draw attention. Sometimes we tell no, see this. Look at me, look at the board. This means draw attention. It just they miss little bit, they would have little bit interest could have come down. Just we have to motivate. So look at this, look at the board. Then I said movement of the physical movement of the teacher in the class. And then gestures. Uh, our face, our hands, movements, all those things counts in the class. So through all these things, we have to provide the different different stimulus in the class so that the interest is certain. And it is like this modulation in voice, pass, change of senses, change of interaction, draw attention, movement of teacher, and gestures. Okay. We'll move to the la last one. Skill of achieving close. So we at the end of the class, it cannot be abruptly ended. So from the one hour we are we started a class, we are explaining something, we have used a blackboard, we have questioned the students, many things have gone through this one hour or some 40, 45 minutes, something. So at the end of the class, we have to take some five minutes. It is all allotted for the ending our class. So Ending our class may be done in these four ways. So the first one is synthesis of the concept. So we have to summarize what we have what we have taught in class. So we have taught what is a teaching is. It is a complex phenomenon. We have said what a definition is. There are many skills up to 140, but we have taken eight skills for our course that we call it as core teaching skills. So that's just a synthesis. Each skill has got a component. So synthesis of components. Then apperception. So apperception means just linking the previous knowledge toward to the new knowledge. So the people may be knowing about house surgeon of MBBS, apprentice of engineers. So before becoming a full-fledged professional, they have to go certain type of training to learn that profession that we call it as that we call micro teaching in for teaching professionals so that we that is what our perception then application what we do in future if we know micro teaching what we are going to do in future that i'll be telling you later application 
then opportunity for further learning so after micro teaching is completed what what you can learn about this you can learn about basic course you can learn about micro teaching all these are further learning so achieving closer consists of four components synthesis of compound concepts a perception application opportunity for further learn okay see so up to this is we have uh, finished the eight skills eight core skills we have taken anyway these one by one i'll be also demonstrating before you but since today is the introduction of micro teaching this i have told about the eight skills and its components okay just we will uh, see the skills so these are uh, skill of initiation explanation demonstration questioning using blackboard reinforcement stimulus variation class so these are the skills which we are going to practice okay so let us go for i have uh, shown one video at the beginning of the class where where uh, there was where it was not a good class let me also show now a good a good video you see this how this teacher i have here teacher is taking a pendulum class. i have an object that weighs 15 kilograms and i can lift it up 1 meter which i have done now that means i've done work mgh is the work i have done believe me i've increased the potential energy of this object 15 times 10 is about 150 joules if i let it fall then that will be converted to kinetic energy if i would let it swing from one meter height and you would be there and it would hit you you'd be dead 150 joules is enough to kill you they use these devices they're called a wreck -a ball they use them to demolish buildings you lift up a very heavy object even heavier than this and then you let it go, you swing it, thereby converting gravitational potential energy into kinetic energy, and that way you can demolish a building. You just let it hit, and it breaks a building. And that's the whole idea of wrecking. So you are using then the conversion of gravitational potential energy to kinetic energy. Now, I am such a strong believer of the conservation of mechanical energy that I am willing to put my life on the line. If I release that bob from a certain height, then that bob can never come back to a point where the height is any larger. If I release it from this height, and it swings, then when it reaches here, it could not be higher. There is a conversion from gravitational potential energy to kinetic energy back to gravitational potential energy, and it will come to a stop here. And when it swings back, it should not be able to reach any higher, provided that I do not give this object an initial speed when I stand here. I trust the conservation of mechanical energy for 100%, I may not trust myself. I'm going to release this object, and I hope I will be able to do it at zero speed, so that when it comes back, it may touch my chin, but it may not crush my chin. I want you to be extremely <coughs> quiet, because this is no joke. If I don't succeed in giving it zero speed, then this will be my last lecture. <laughs> I will close my eyes. I don't want to see this. So please be very quiet. I almost didn't sleep all night. Three, two, one, zero. <laughs> Physics works and I'm still alive. I th you have seen this. 
we can also teach like this provided if we work hard if you prepare like this and the way in which we have prepared in an innovative way to tell about the physics laws by leaving the ball in zero potential energy not giving force to the ball okay so he has innovated in his own way and he has also put himself in the risk and he taught in the class so that was a very good class so therefore a teacher has to prepare many things before entering into the class so that is what i wanted to tell so we move further so having understood what is a micro teaching and what are the core teaching skills for us and now we move to next phase and that it's called as phases in micro teaching so there are three phases in micro teaching one we call it as knowledge phase the second is skill acquisition phase and the third is transfer phase the knowledge phase is what i have told you now so we we have come across what a micro teaching is we have come across what a core teaching skills are and we have taken eight core teaching skills and little bit we know about it components even though it may not be fully at least little bit names we have understood so that's about knowledge and the next is skill acquisition space this year we have to teach it how you will be teaching you will be seeing my demonstration i will demonstrate this skill before you so by seeing my demonstration so you have to prepare a micro lesson plan and then you have to practice this micro teaching see for teaching it is called as lesson plan for micro teaching it is called as micro lesson plan a, a lesson plan which is of dialogue formats so for teaching also we have to prepare lesson plan we have to plan it for micro teaching also we have to prepare and that is called micro lesson plan okay that we have to prepare we have to practice that is skill acquisition tricks so you know the knowledge we have got a practice of it then if you transfer into the real situation in a full fledged class then that is called the transfer phase so these three we call it as phases in micro teaching knowledge skill acquisition and transfer phase okay and this is what the micro teaching cycle which you people have to do maybe if uh, you you are offline classes there this is what we will be doing uh, in our university every thursday and friday but since it is online we may make some arrangements to do this also this micro teaching will be a, a cycle consisting of uh, eight components i'll be telling about this one by one see it consists of eight components like this micro teaching cycle you know a cycle means starting and the ending point will be one of the same so identification of skill is suppose if it is a skill of initiation that is what if you are going to practice then that, that you have identified that skill if you want to practice demonstration then demonstration is your skill if you want to practice reinforcement then reinforcement is your skill taken at this moment so identification of the skill and demonstrate the second point demonstration is it means that demonstration by the supervisor like me me i'll be teaching i'll be demonstrating before you the skill of reinforcement the skill of initiation and like that so it is a demonstration by the supervisor and then the third is uh, the third it's of your job the first is the identification the second is the job of the supervisor that from the third step it is a preparing micro lesson plan by the student teacher based upon the preparation of the micro lesson plan the fourth is the fourth step is the execution of the lesson plan which we call it as micro teaching for 5 minutes so and then after micro teaching it will be the feedback given by the peers by your friends to you also by supervisor to you based on the feedback you can replan i mean you can replan the micro lesson plan can make the adjustments what told by the teacher and the peers then reteach then re feedback 
go to if it is good go to the another skin okay like that it is the eight steps eight paths in a micro teaching cycle so the first is identification of a skill a particular skill you take at that moment and then you see the demonstration of the supervisor or faculty by seeing that you start preparing a micro lesson based on that you teach in that class micro teaching get the feedback that is the fifth step get the feedback from two to one is the teacher the another one is the peers based on the feedback go for replanning this is the sixth then seventh is reteaching then the eighth is re feedback get the feedback for the second so mostly by this by this small 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 thing our teaching behavior will be refined refined little bit little bit refined each and every course skills once course skill you are taking go through this cycle and one in max pedagogy one in physical science pedagogy then take the another skill go through this cycle one for mathematics pedagogy one for physical science pedagogy so like this you keep on and get you refined by ourselves so it's a, it's a lifelong process so if you keep on doing like this you will be refining so this we call it as micro teaching cycle this we will be doing you will be doing in, in and you will be after my session is over maybe in a month i will be demonstrating this skill also after that it will be divided into from some 10 students and 10 or 11 students i think 11 into 44 and it will be given to four of our faculty and each faculty will be looking at presentation of each skills eight skills we have to present in each pedagogy mathematics one and physical science one and that will be supervised by our faculty so this is what a micro teaching cycle means see sometimes in examination this may asked in 10 mark question so very simple to write just you understand these eight steps just you keep put this diagram and explain the eight step you will get full marks very simple just just identification of a skin demonstration by the supervisor preparing a micro lesson plan based on that we are teaching get feedback from the students re students and teacher replan revise your micro lesson plan and then reteach and then get the re-feedback. So this is what, just one on para, small, small, with three or four lines, four lines, you can write for these eight steps, then it becomes a descriptive answer. Very simple, just remember the eight steps, that's all. Don't remember anything, or uh, each explanation we need, just by seeing the title itself, we can write three or four statements for each heading. So this gives you a descriptive answer. So, so these things, as as we keep on learning, we also know how to write the answer in examination. So we know how to define micro teaching. Also, we know how to write a micro teaching cycle in an examination. Okay. Now we will see how it is being built further. I said no uh, for future things. Suppose if you are very good at the micro teaching, what, what is the next level for you? The next level for you is the bridge course. If you are good at bridge course, what is the next level for you? You, are good, you will be moving to micro teaching. So therefore, there are three classes of teaching. One is micro teaching. The other one is bridge course. Or sometimes we call it as mini teaching. And then the last is micro teaching. So we will go for uh, one by one. I think uh, before itself, I am presenting. We have taken four uh, characteristics. In four characteristics, we are differenti differentiating three classes of teaching micro, bridge, and macro. The four classes are number of teaching skills, duration, number of students, and content. Okay. Number of teaching skills is one. And duration is five minutes, number of student is five to six, and content which is suitable for five minutes is goes for micro teaching. If you slowly add small, small thing to this, then it will become bridge course. 
if you have many things if you add then it will become normal teaching or macro teaching so in bridge course the number of scale is 2 or 3 so duration bit you increase pre micro was 5 minutes here it will be 10 minutes or little bit also more 10 to 15 the number of student is 5 or 6 here it will be 10 content for 10 minutes micro for micro teaching it will be for 5 minutes here it is for 10 minutes then now you take all the eight skills then it become macro teaching all the eight skills for 1 hour or 45 minutes for entire class and a lesson so this becomes a micro teaching so this shows our future if you learn micro teaching very well then you go for bridge course if you know bridge course then you are ready for going to schools next semester or next but next semester where we will be teaching to the students as a part of internship in our curriculum this is what we wanted to see in this first session of our class so i want to summarize what we have seen in this class so we have seen what a micro teaching is we can define it and it is used in, if we say a professional course in all professional course it will be there a micro level learning will be there our micro level learning we call it as micro teaching that's all in every course in every profession the person who takes the profession they have to undergo a micro level learning so that micro level learning in case of us we call it as micro teaching okay then micro teaching we have seen and then in eight core skill we have taken for our course that core skill we have uh, just named also we have seen along with components after that we got to know what a micro teaching cycle is and that is also for a descriptive answer just we touched upon it and then the last we have said there are three classes of teach micro teaching bridge course and macro teaching so these are the references for uh, the preparation of um, of this class which was used by me so one of the beautiful book is ignos book you can take also available in the net the curriculum and instruction it has got four blocks and the last block deals about this you can take the last block curriculum and instruction the last block deals about this micro teaching and what i normally use few books in my uh, teaching so that is matthew and molukutty and ncert teaching of science i think biju sir also has shared with you in that also you can see then rodha mogan she has written and man also my book is there. so with that i end this uh, session and after that you will be having few questions which we have to type in the spaces allocated just just that as i have said in and the questioning skill my intention is to know how much you have learned that's all so the same whatever i am doing the same i am following this this uh, this much you have learned just go and type it that is used for only analysis purpose and nothing more so with that thank you students we will meet in next class thank you